Mm-hmm. See, there are very many. These are big stories, and the big story today in the nation with with regards to the flooding across the country. Yeah, and it's a huge issue. And you talk, you told us about it when you were reviewing the newspaper, mm. um, newspapers in the morning. This is, this is beyond what we can just say. Okay, it's heavy rainfall. Yeah, this is destruction. It's destruction of property, lives lost infrastructure being destroyed as we watch it's gonna be with us for a long time and city like you're saying yesterday as you're seeing all these things happening uh expect disease as well yes guaranteed guaranteed and loads mm. and loads of it mm. because i mean if you're looking at this water and you're looking at it and a whole community that is waterlogged what do you think is actually happening these are communities some of these areas let's mm-hmm. talk about kisauni okay mm. you think they have a sewage system not really so they have soak pits okay mm. they're pit latrines so when you have this sort of water what do you think happens? it's going to happen that water that you see running what do you think is inside that water mm. okay now how can you not then have disease <sighs> number one even when you get rained on you will mm. talk about diseases that are brought about by people living in wet surroundings mm. just forget about what is under the earth and what has been brought up because of this deluge and then you talk about the plannings. The rains are point, not pointing to us. They're giving us a 4D, 5D vision mm. of the inadequacy of our planning. And they're telling us this is exactly how you planned. Mm. Now, there are those who argue we couldn't have planned for this, but we were told. Is it the first time we've had heavy rains that have they, they destroyed things? No, it isn't. It isn't. It's just that this time around, for some people in living memory, they've never seen such rains before. Mm. Mm. If there had been preparations, even if they were inadequate, the damage that we're seeing would have been reduced. You know, even being where we are, I think right now what what many would question is, is does the government have a handle on this? Like, so yes, we hosted a uh, senior man, director at uh, Red Cross. And he told us, unlike very many other instances where he's been involved, this time he's seeing better coordination. Mm. Better coordination at national level, better coordination in terms of even other um, relief agencies coming in and being coordinated from one single structure. But question is, is that being felt across the country by all the people that are suffering? Is that being able to be scaled you know, immediately? There's yeah. an issue that is I- emerging. And those are the issues that we have to keep asking ourselves. What exactly is the kind of coordination that we are getting here? Do we see it? Do we because see it? Do must, we feel it? It must be manifest, isn't it? Yes. So where is it? If there was a coordinated <clears throat> effort, if there was something that everybody was saying, this is what we are going to do, should this happen in this, even if it does, this is what we've put in place to ensure that so, should something happen, this is how we're going to deal with it. If there was, we would be able to see it. Mm. But what are the cries that we've been hearing over the last couple of days? Mm. Now we're looking for relief food. We're looking for shelter where we can put people. What we're trying to do is make sure that we put things in place because of this. It's already here. It's not a matter of it is coming. It is here, right here, and it is happening. And it's unfortunate that here we are yet again in another situation whereby there could have been something that should have been done, but it was not done. And now we're dealing with greater levels of destruction Mm. like you said the number would have been reduced the amount the severity would have been reduced if actually it had been done Mm. is this the first place on the world to have been met by floods no no this is the first time the world is experiencing El Nino. no no and it's just i don't i do not know what's going to get us to that point whereby Mm. um we actually prepare for a a rainy day Mm. no pun intended but really do prepare and make sure that it, these things that we can do are actually sorted she, she out. Eric asked the question, does the government have a handle on this thing? Mm. Well, if they did, what are the signs that they do? I don't know. That's, I think that's, that's, that's where the government often fails in terms of communication. Mm. Okay? Because they may probably actually have things that they're doing, you know, in those severely affected areas. 
that even the local leaders of those areas do not know about because we saw the leaders from Asal speaking just the other day. Yeah. Was it yesterday or the, the day before Saying yesterday? that they had not received any money from yeah. yeah. This leaders from Asal led by uh, Kainan, the governor of, of, of Mandera, the governor of Wajia, the leaders of, of uh, Garissa, they're all coming out to say, you know what, we need more, better concerted effort. At, that shows that they are not in the room. That even if there's a coordinating mechanism, these particular leaders of these areas are not in the room coordinating this, me this mechanism. No, they're not. Because if they were, they would be able to tell us about it. Yeah, they should be talking about it. We did not see governors coming out during COVID times, speaking outside, saying, you know what, we know what. Because they, it was very clear. It had been announced. The Central Committee was dealing with Yes, matters. and every time there were queries that were substantiated, you knew who to ask. Yeah. And you'd say, the vaccines are here, we'd say, okay, where exactly where are, are they? they? And, and where can told. people access them? And you'd be told. If we look back at the COVID, the implementation of it and the questions, very many questions notwithstanding, at least on the communication front, they got it right. They, they got it right because we knew that there is a national emergency response committee. We did. We knew that the chair of this is the cabinet secretary for health. We did. We knew that on a daily basis, the, the cabinet secretary for health his two CASs, the Director General for Health, and the other directors for sanitation, blah, and even blah, the blah, PS, blah, and the PSs, they were, were there. there. And we knew what we were hearing from them, right? And then we also knew that there's another coordinating team that even has military officers and all that is dealing with inner security, making sure that the curfew is imposed and it's being all that we knew. Yes, they when even had a committee of experts who knew exactly, exactly what to do with regarding this disease. People who had conducted research, people whose area of speciality these microbes were, yes. and they would talk about it. Yes, yes. So we had this kind of you know feeling of all right. So the government, at least we know who is advising the president on this, who's answering questions on this. If questions are to be asked in parliament, we know uh, Susan Mochache will go and answer these questions. We knew. Yes. Who's dealing with this matter? Yes. When vaccines started arriving, we knew, all right, so vaccines will arrive at JKIA, they'll immediately be taken to Kitengela. Yes. In Kitengela, we have the big cold storage facility. From Kitengela, they'll be taken across the country. Yes. To, we, kni we knew. At, we knew. Even if there were issues, we knew. At least we knew. When they were given the five billion and were wondering where it went, we knew, we knew. there was five billion. Yes. And we knew what was expected, so we knew what to question. This particular time, the deputy president is chairing the response to the El Nino and its effects. Yes, he is. Okay. We have heard that. We have heard he met and he has had meetings with governors, this and the other. But on a regular basis, on what they are doing, as the floods continue, as the roads get become impassable, we are not hearing, okay, so this road to Modogashe is now becoming impassable, so this is what's going to happen to the people who need to travel. To Nairobi, the people who need to travel for medical uh, emergencies because somebody was undergoing dialysis and they, they need to go to, for dialysis. This is what the Ministry of Health is doing to ensure that this person gets dialysis. If this person is going for chemotherapy or cancer treatment, this is what the Ministry of Health is doing. All right, the children will be going to school uh, and they're sitting their exams. The children who are sitting their exams, Ministry of Education, this is what they're doing. The road is blocked off. Kipchumba Murkomen and the road agencies, this is what they're doing. We don't hear it. And we know we should. Because if, should say, be something like the, daily. the river, the Athi River, okay, mm. or even the Mtitonde River, bursts its banks, you know, the roads become impossible. It yep. means if you're driving to Mombasa, you need to know. You need to know. If there is a river anywhere in the country that bursts its mm. banks, it means that road becomes impossible. It doesn't, there's nothing that stops the government from telling us exactly this is a hot spot. Mm. You need to avoid this. This is what you need to do. Now, the media reports on it. Yep. But then, the government input that the media could be reporting on, saying this is what the government is saying, that is not there. That's what we're lacking. It's not there. That's what we need. We need to know. So, for example, if you wanted to cross over into Tanzania um, from what's that border point called in Kuala? You're talking about, um, <laughs> yeah. how can I actually forget? <laughs> yes. Lunga Lunga. Lunga yes. Okay. <laughs> and this bridge has now, water has stopped the bridge. Mm. So the road is now impassable. We've actually blocked the road. Yes. So what is the message? What's the communication? If you must not travel to Tanzania at this time, please change your travel plans. Or, or, a national announcement. or, look or if you must, 
then this is the road that Kenha has identified for vehicles to use. Yes. Those that are carrying goods and those goods are important to be transported across the border, this is where they are using. Do we instead hear of, that? Instead of going to Lunga Lunga, go to Taveta. Yes. Okay. This is a coordination that we need to be hearing from our government. What we are hearing from our government is other stories. Is it difficult? Apparently. What is, I mean, what is difficult exactly? Communicating. Yeah, I think the communication part of it is difficult. Mm. But I think it's just be, it's beyond the communication here in the actual doing um, of some of these things. Um, just let's, let's take the last two weeks. Mm. So what happened last week and what's happening this week? Mm. Okay? Let's not even talk about the rain that came before that. If from what we saw uh, in the coastal counties, Mombasa, uh, Kwale, Lamu, those three alone. Mm. And then the rain maybe gave let up for a day or two, right? Yep. So the flood waters that had come in, they went and they found somewhere to settle. The puddles were still there. The rain came back on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then now here we are on Tuesday and it's done the same thing overnight. You have seen the pattern. You have seen what is going to happen. They've even said to us that it is going to continue like this for the foreseeable future. And this foreseeable is about a month. Mm. Is it an impossibility to do something about it? Because let's ask a simple question. What's the problem in Mombasa? We've been told that there's a drainage issue, right? It's more, yep. than, it's more than just a drainage issue. We've been issue. told that there's an mm -hmm. infrastructure issue. It is more We've than been just told an about the issue. age of the town. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? That the structures in the town will not allow mm. for the proper passage of water. Mm. Because it is possible in a place that has been properly structured or at least been tinkered with a little bit, the passage of water does not become a nuisance. Mm. When it rains or whatever, it doesn't become a nuisance because it's been properly planned. We knew the rain was coming. Yep. Would it have been so? And there are people who can tell you, they're, they're, they're here. There's, they're, there are people who can tell you, this is what you do. We're not asking you to destabilize the entire city, but we're saying do this, this, and this mm. so that water can flow and find its natural force, uh, uh, source or find its natural path back mm. to, you know, where, where it should be and doesn't affect life in the manner in which it has. Mm. But I can bet you, the hope is, fingers crossed, knock on woods, that folks are saying, you know what, this rain will end at some point and this problem that we are seeing now will finish. Yeah. And that's a big issue whereby you're saying the rain is temporary. So why do we need to do anything permanent, spend a lot of money, make ourselves uncomfortable in the meantime to sort out this issue when the rain is not going to last forever? If you ask me, these are all tied into the conversations that we've had this morning. This rain is lasting. Okay. These are mm -hmm. all tied into conversations. It will not that we've be forever, today. but this rain is lasting. Yeah. And if you look at the frequency mm. and the intensity with which this rain is coming down, mm. this is not something you want to have a little chit-chat about. Mm. See, as it rains, it's causing more damage. And it's not as though it's raining in drips. Yep. It's pouring down yep. in torrents. So, everything that we're discussing here is an emergency. It's not a little problem mm -mm. that we can wish away. No. Nope. Yeah. So what then are we going to do when disease strikes and suddenly you talk about lives being lost? Not just to the water, now because of disease. So you have water causing a problem, then you have diseases. And then you have people displaced. And then you have people who've lost property. You know when the disease will come, it is not now. No. It's when that water has pooled for some time and it will do so. Yes. The water that was an issue for people in Mombasa has not gone away. No, it hasn't. So it's pulled for some time and then you have this collection of pockets of water. You, It will rear its ugly head. Guess what? In the next six or so, five or so weeks, just read what it takes. In the next five or so weeks, when what is happening? When children are going back to school. Then what are you going to do? Then what's going to happen? And in some places, that the schools will not be in existence anymore. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that there's a lot that's happening right now. Mm. A lot in terms of even destruction. Just imagine the people who have been displaced. Mm. So how do we, how how are they going to get back mm. on their footing? What about those roads that have actually been swept away? Meaning there was a road here, uh, it's no longer exists. So meaning you're cut off. Yeah. 
So then, then what do you do? We have to rebuild those roads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is why you look back and you ask yourself, is the government doing this deliberately? You know, just saying, okay, we are not going to focus on this because if you focus on this, this is a one big problem. We we, we don't want to focus the attention of the country on All this. Right. <laughs> so we are going to divert the attention okay. of the country. And one of the things that we hope to do is, you know, just the president casually saying, you know, Mungu ni nani, yeah. God has told him that yeah. it's not going to rain. But yes, now. Unfortunately, it rains this but much. Eric, and now if, the you God if you ask me a question, expecting one answer, and I decide to answer another one, what am I telling you? <laughs> You don't want to answer it. Uh -huh. I'm not answer in fact, I'm not You're going avoiding to the question. Completely. I'm not going to deal with that issue and I'm going to wish it away by focusing on that other thing. I don't have to tell you to your face that I'm mm. not interested. My actions will show you. And it is, look, it's blaring mm. every time. Silence is, a, is an answer. It is actually communication. It a very is effective telling one. you something. What value are you placing on the thriving of individuals, of families, of communities? We're not talking about three. Three if, is three too many. Mm. We're talking about 80,000 already. And the rain has not stopped. And it's not about to stop. We're talking about 20 Kenyans dead. Now, look, we are saying that the destruction and the severity of it could have been reduced we are saying that right now in the middle of the turmoil there is still something that can be done but what have we heard we need help the governors the executive of Kwale county are saying we need help lamu we need help mombasa saying we actually didn't receive anything the northern county saying we actually didn't receive anything we need help are you kidding for something that we were told about three months ago it's not a joke three months ago and we were told EACC, in the name of one CEO, Twali, what did he tell county governors? This money that you people have been given for mitigation efforts, let me not see that any of you have used it or misappropriated it because we will come for you. So there was some kind of action somewhere, but it did not result in anything. No, let me ask, this action that we're speaking of, I mean, I'm not going to give credit where it doesn't exist, okay? What exactly was done? Which one? Okay, the money, did it land somewhere? Did it go to somebody? What did they do with it? What, what action? What action? What did they do with it? We just know that there was money, supposedly. Where, where did what, it go? What seems to be a trend is that there's a conversation about it. About some money somewhere. Yes, there's a conversation. Then there's a conversation about mitigation. Conversation. When you ask, we've heard what, where, sure. Okay? You're given more conversation. Mm. So now, the rains are upon us. This is not a conversation, it's a reality. The effects of the rain are not a conversation, they are, it's a reality. So then what do we do with these realities? because <laughs> the health system is going to be challenged like it has not been challenged in a very very long time properly yep. and you're talking about a health system that already has challenges yep properly okay what are we going to do take your pick malaria typhoid cholera which Throw one pneumonia Bill Hartz, yeah. Bill Hartz, yeah. pneumonia pneumonia which mm. one which what do you want it mm. to look like on monday tuesday take your pick mm. that's what we're talking about here mm. that's the severity we're talking about malaria still the world number one killer in terms of disease there because of this this is what we're talking and this about is going to multiply. in counties whereby its prevalence is still through the roof yes so that's now there'll be a multiplicity about. of this prevalence that's what we're talking about and it's not to, it's not to be debbie downers or doomsday uh, protagonist purveyors, we're just yes. uh, purveyors we're just saying you know what look here yeah, this is the thing in this room we talked about the severity of a weather situation that comes after a severe drought we talked about it in this room and the hope was that you know what guys it is coming let's do something about it, it is coming these cries that we're hearing they were coming it was going to happen what are we doing and we explained and we spoke and we brought in experts and they spoke and we heard of mitigation you know the if this was a subject that had never been spoken of mm. and we're talking about a subject that is not understood mm. then we'd be saying you know this thing caught us by surprise this didn't catch us by surprise nope. no it didn't nope it nope. did not scholars we had a scholar here in april who said you see this drought that we're having we've experienced long season of drought and this is, it will be followed by severe floods. rains it yes. will the same severity of the drought yep. will be responded to by severity of rain yep. and water. Kenya Met has, we had the director just the other day, said since February we started noticing the El Nino phenomenon. We saw the likelihood of it. By June we had confirmed 
with no uncertainty with little certainty yes that this is going to happen, happen. yes and they communicated it and they communicated yes, they and did. that's where the meeting took place and the meeting discussed money this is the situation room the only way to start your day